This is WOMLP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 The Radiator. It's The Rocket Shop. Good evening. I'm your host, Tom Proctor, and with me tonight is Jersey Dave. Hello. Hello, or Jersey Dave's, should I say? Yeah, my, my buddy Dave Green is here tonight, so it's Jersey Dave's yeah, yeah. tonight. <laughs> Jersey Dave's. <laughs> both, both from Jersey? Are we? Or... Um, I'm from New Jersey. He is from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay, so we've got Jersey Dave and Mass Dave. Yeah. All right, <laughs> perfect. The Daves are in the house at the very least. Um, well, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. This is really cool. Yeah, yeah I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, what you got for us. I've been listening to you guys uh, earlier today. Um, me and my partner were, were enjoying you in the sunshine earlier Ooh. on your Spotify. So That's fun. I'm, I'm curious <coughs> to hear what's going to sound acoustic style. Um, we like kicking it off with a song. So yeah. what have you got for us? Uh, we have the uh, the basement song. It's... Uh, probably like the first song I wrote so yeah that's cool <coughs> Basement song there by Jersey Dave. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. So obviously you're from Jersey and your name is Dave, but that's basically what we've got to go on so far. So could you fill in the blanks? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm uh, from New Jersey. My name is Dave, and um, I I like music. Um, I like playing music. I think it, you know, it's fun. Um, I uh, like to plan it locally back home. Um, it was a good way to, to make friends and, you know, express yourself, especially in high school. I feel like high school's a rough time. I wrote that song in high school. Um, so yeah, that's just sort of what I've been, what I've been doing since high school. I've been writing music, uh, just seeing how I feel about it and <laughs> showing it to my friends and, uh, trying to have fun along the way. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been doing this for, for a bit. Uh, how do you find yourself up in, uh, um, I assume Burlington, just because that's where the studio is, but that's n not always the case. How do you find yourself in Vermont, the Burley? Yeah, so um, I, uh, I wound up here um, going to college, um, spent two years, and then had quite the hiatus, like three years off, and then I 
came back and now I'm having fun and uh, I'm having fun by being here. So, yeah. Fantastic. So um, you said you kind of started this off in high school back in Jersey. Um, what was your kind of your trajectory into music in the first place? Like, when was, when was, I mean, I, I'm not got a musical bone in my body, so I don't believe I've, 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 I've tried, I've tried, trust <laughs> me. <laughs> so I've looked at a guitar, picked it up, I've realized I'm terrible at it. Um, where, when for you was like, yeah, this is actually something that I want to kind of really dedicate a lot of time and energy to. Okay. And, uh, okay. and, and how did that then actually go to the point where you're like, actually, this is not just something I want to dedicate my time and energy to. I want to show this off to other people. Gotcha. All right. Well, it all started, uh, Tom, in kindergarten. Um, I played Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star um, for my star day, which is the <laughs> day, you know, where you get to do your whole little spiel for the rest of the class. And um, I got laughed at. And <laughs> that sort of deterred day? me. I know. On Star Day? It was, it was, it's rough growing up in New Jersey. What can I say? <laughs> um, but then I, uh, I took a break from it and tried trumpet. But like back, even back then, I was like, oh, this is fun. Like, you know, playing music. My, I have a very musical family. I mean, it's like a, it's like, like a whole like, musical theater every family dinner we have. So um, in middle school, I picked it back up. Um, I think I learned a Weezer song and I was like, you know what, I like this again. You know, I wanna I wanna do this. This is fun. This is a good way to to express emotion, I think, you know. Um, better than than throwing shoes at walls and uh and and, and all sorts of, of bad habits, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, you know. Um so yeah, that's that's you know, it all started with Star Day. And then New Jersey has a pretty cool local music scene. That's probably also the reason why I I've been enjoying being up here since 2018. Just, you know, I uh, saw some shows here at Jim's Basement and Higher Ground and, you know, Monkey House, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. But um, back to, you know, what I was doing. Um, yeah, New Jersey has this place called The Meat Locker. I started going there in high school. I thought it was too scary. It's a scary place, even by the name. Well, it's called a meat locker for a start. Yeah, watch out, you know. So, you know, you're, uh, you walk past it, and it's like this old basement in the middle of town that like you know a bunch of punks are hanging out around but every night like for ten dollars you get to see like all these people my age perform and express themselves and really have a fun time and I was like as soon as I as soon as I went down there first thing was like oh I'm so stupid like I look so stupid but the second thing I thought was like this is so cool I need to do this so I did that so I'd say the meat locker was a big inspiration and then um so you performed at the Meat Locker? Yeah, eventually. It took a while. It took two years, but uh, I then performed at the Meat Locker. What, I, what was the the tipping point, if you will? You know, because you said it just took two years. Yeah. So obviously you're going there for two years. You're seeing all these other bands perform. Yeah. Your age, your kind of style, your kind of people. What was the moment where you're like, sod it. I'm going to get, I'm going to sum myself up this week. Uh I think it had something to do with uh, like high school rejection. I think <laughs> I think it had to do with a with like a crush or something stupid. But uh, <laughs> did you invite him or him or them? No, uh, it was it was sort of in <laughs> it was sort of my expression of like, oh, I don't think they like me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do something fun with friends instead of wasting my time <laughs> in the room crying. Um, yeah, so I decided to. Um, to like try the meat locker and I tried it. I had a grunge band called Wendigo. Wendigo. It was uh, super fun. Great was, name. Yeah, absolutely chaotic. We we covered like flipper songs and like I I was like covered in red paint a couple times, played the trombone on stage. That was fun. Um so yeah, no, it was great. I mean both times it was like it was so nice because I don't know, I didn't feel like I was really connected, uh just growing up in general. Like I have a amazing family who I'm very grateful for, but it's kind of felt alone a lot. And the cool thing that music and the Meat Locker did was just uh, bring a lot of people together and have a really fun time doing it, especially down there. I mean, it would get wild and down in the Meat Locker, that's for sure. It was a, it was a great time. Um, I also have, just shouting out uh, my punk friends from Binghamton, I have a friend named Raven, and she like hosts one of the coolest communities of, of, of punks like ever they're just all really kind I think between that and the meat locker it's just sort of inspired me to want to you know 
play music with my friends and create like a little group where we can all feel supported and loved and stuff. That's why I like open mics. That's why I like jamming. That's why I like Dave Green <laughs> over here. It's this weird juxtaposition, I think, with punk and metal, actually, where the, the, the music, I, I can't say I'm a big metal fan, a bit more on the, like a bit of punk. Um, Same. But yeah, it's it, it's this music that I ordinarily I would not listen to. It sounds aggressive and violent and too much. And on the face of it, you'd imagine the people who play it are also violent and aggressive and too much. But it's it's very strange because in in both the punk and the metal community, you probably find the kindest people you'll ever meet and the most supportive people you ever meet. Um, and I, I I've never quite I I've got theories, I guess, on on why that juxtaposition is. But I'm very interested to hear. You, you, your take on it because obviously the meat locker sounds like the sort of place where metal and punk were playing and yet obviously you got these great people uh playing there what what is it about that kind of music that kind of brings together the kindest people yeah i'm kind of interested in your theories too to be honest I mean, but uh <laughs> you, you know like um i only have one it's just like you know it's like catharsis you know what i mean like people have a lot of pent-up energy especially in the modern world and uh i think going down in the basement and screaming you know makes you feel good and then you have some friends you can make down there so it's like oh i i'm i'm feeling better now you're feeling better now we're friends you know so i think there's something along the side of that and uh just like um like just the fact that usually there's like an aggression and sometimes you can like put the aggression in a positive way you know like instead of just being angry all the time, like, be vehemently nice and try to be vehemently communal, you know, so that's my theory. What's what's your theory? I, I think not dissimilar to yours, yeah. to be honest. I think I think the, the reason why people play this kind of music, punk and metal, I think metal's kind of just the further on, further on the spectrum of punk, really, is because, you know, they've got a lot of hurt in their own life, and as you said, it's kind of a, a healthy outlet for it. It's a, it's a way to be able to express these very extreme emotions that we all feel in a fairly uh, benign way, in a way, you know, it's, it's, it's all it is, 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 is screaming coming out of a, of a speaker. It's not hitting someone. It's not, it's not being racist. It's not being misogynistic. It's just, you know, shouting loudly into a mic to, to varying degrees of skill. <laughs> and uh, I think the people listening to it, the people it resonates with feel that same way. And in those moments when the, the songs play, you get to have that kind of release of frustration but because everyone has had that kind of collective trauma, if you will, from one way or another, everyone also realizes for the most part, it would be great if people are nice to me and so are quite nice to their fellow person because they know that they've been through something similar. And so you end up getting these very positive, very caring and loving communities, even when the the the, 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 the tip of the spear or the distillation of, of that community is effectively being quite violent and mm -hmm. screaming into a mic yeah yeah no that makes a lot of sense so i feel like it's really just your theory but yeah yeah uh, nicer sounding <laughs> <laughs> smarter a lot, a lot more flowery language um i can't help but noticing i wouldn't describe you as punk um yeah. definitely the mac demarco shoegazy kind of thing passed mm -hmm. through my head i feel like it's a little bit trite to be honest um a little bit you know sad boy indie from the mid 2010s <laughs> um, so how did you find yourself going from <laughs> ouch <laughs> and I mean no offence but I love a bit of sad boy no, from the cool. 2010s I'm a big fan of it yeah um, how did you how do you go from going from like grunge punk in the meat locker to, to kind of what you got now I don't think I've ever been like a punk I have friends who are punks and they're they're real punks I'm just sort of like a punk appreciator you know what I mean <laughs> I observe and I'm like yes you know like, um, I, f I feel like I'm kind of like, um, like, um, uh, I'm that one guy from, uh, SLC punk who's, wears the glasses and isn't really a punk, but sort of is a little angry. <laughs> um, an honorary punk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm more like a guy who's into like, like alt rock and it's just sort of happened that, you know, a lot of the people who are just really in my opinion, like, I get along well with or down to earth, you know, they, they just happen to be punk and metal. I think I'm, I'm uh, very anxious and very angry. <laughs> I, I think the, uh, the community um, 
the like the the feeling of the of the music sort of goes with it. So I like that. Um, yeah, I uh, I also you know I just. I don't really look cool with too much punk stuff on. I try to rock it. I just, I can't, I can't rock it. I, I could never wear like, like earrings and look cool. That's, that's like, that's just the sad truth of it. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's all about how you carry it. To be honest. It could be, but, it could be. You know, if you're not, if you don't feel like you can carry it, you probably can't carry it. Yeah, so, no. you know. I'm going to leave it up to my, to my punk friends who <laughs> absolutely rock it. And I'll just, I'll stuck looking like I'm. Just came out of like a Beach Fossils concert. Or something. <laughs> so how did you, uh, how how did your music kind of distillate out uh, out of this scene? How did you find find your your style? Because you've definitely got a style. I list, listening today on Spotify, um, there, there was clearly a, a, a genre uh, kind of a lane that you kind of go into. So how did you find that kind of lane? Yeah. Um, so it was uh, you know I was angry coming out of high school, like most people are, I suppose. And uh, I was like, oh, I really want to like rip off Nirvana. So that was my first project. <laughs> Got all that out. And then, um, you know, just various circumstances between like, you know, getting that out of your system and, you know, um, sort of more just appreciating quieter music in general. And um, just... Uh, like going to coffee houses and and open mics and really like resonating with that a little bit more and um i uh yeah just just uh just sort of enjoying a quieter sound i also got a brain injury <laughs> that's that's pretty serious and might prevents have me from to do. Uh, it might not i mean yeah. who knows it's yeah. quite weird actually the last person i interviewed a couple of weeks ago yeah. also got a brain injury so I'm, I'm now wondering if there's an epidemic it's, among musicians in, in Vermont it's a theme yeah. of the of the visitors to to uh, the rocket shop but this is how we book people yeah days. exactly scour UVM's <laughs> brain injury ward yeah no but uh yeah just that also I mean that sounds silly enough but it's like yeah it, it you know that's the sort of uh music that I can listen to nowadays and enjoy it without hurting my head so uh but yeah I don't know. That was a all over the place sort of answer. I, I I feel like you you actually summed it up quite quite well. Actually, there was there was a definite pathway there with a with a strong direction at the very end there. You make me feel so good. <laughs> I'm really glad you're running this. <laughs> <laughs> I just turn up and uh, and ask questions. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely on Bob and Jim on that one. But we would love to hear another song. So what you got for us? Yeah. Um. So I really you know it's Halloween. It's spooky time. Um. I uh. During COVID, I watched Train to Busan. I thought it was really cool. So uh, I made a song about it called Train to Busan. So we're going to play it. Feel it. 
right, Train to Busan there by Jersey Dave. Um, so that was off your EP, I believe, yep. which was With Love. Um, so the first two songs you've, you've played tonight yeah. are, are from that EP. Did you guys listen to that one? Um, I did listen to Train to Busan. It definitely caught my eye. I used to that's live, awesome. I used to live in Busan. Oh, that's sick. Uh, for, for a year, uh, about a God, over a decade ago now. Were there any zombies? There? Uh, no zombies. Okay, that's good. No zombies, which was thankful. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, lots of British people like myself roving around pretending to teach English. Oh, fun. Um, <laughs> a lot of university students. It's a great city, actually. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun there. No zombies. Uh, no zombies, thankfully. The yeah. train to Busan, though, is remarkably quick, and I just want to say shows up uh, American public transport infrastructure. Yeah. It's 300 kilo- kilometers an hour. No. It's, it's nuts. $50 to get from uh, Busan to Seoul. But anyway, that's, yeah. my, that's my public transportation route of the evening. No, I completely agree. <laughs> uh, New Jersey uh, modes of transportation are uh, interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I've been stuck on that turnpike so many times, <laughs> and I uh, curse it every time. Um, so the EP with love, tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about it when it came out and what, uh, preceding that, you know, what was the impetus between, b- behind getting together this collection of songs? Yeah. So it was one of those things where fresh out of Wendigo really want to do something again with my fingers. Um, and I was like, man, like I, I just want to, I just want to get it out there. And I had a, a buddy, um, I was up in college and so I, I had a lot of time on my hands. Um, just sort of sitting in the dorm and for each song I just was feeling a different way and they all just sort of some scraps from high school some scraps from college and then you know I was talking to my friend Liam about it. I was like let's let's get this going and he's like brother I'll do it for free <laughs> 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 I had to do the voice because me and Dave Green and Liam we're, we're all buddies and um, he's an absolute chiller um, but uh, yeah he, he wanted to do it for free so I was like okay heck with it you know I'll, I'll get this in the works then COVID hit, and it was just like, well, now I gotta. So I had all this, this little hodgepodge, you know, like this little, you know, like compost heap of, of recorded demos on my phone, and I was like, you know, throw it together, have some, have some fun with it, you know, just something to do, something to do with your time during COVID, especially. Were you just recording in like your dorm room or your in or in the house you're living at at the time then? Yeah, I uh, I started recording out of the dorm. And then as soon as I went home for COVID, um, like everybody else, I, uh, I was just, was upstairs, had a laptop, microphone, and I was like, okay, this, this works, you know what I mean? Like, I'll just, just lay it down and see what happens. I, uh, I, I really, I didn't, I don't think I did an awful job. I was going to say, you did, I, I wouldn't have pegged it was a kind of a... Uh, a bedroom recording yeah, yeah. it sounded very smooth in fact the uh, i don't know if it's yourself or or uh, other uh, other dave that did the the finger plucking for some of these tracks but they were absolutely phenomenal um <laughs> yeah and so i i didn't listen to that thinking oh yeah it was definitely made in someone's in someone's bedroom yeah. so you, you did a remarkable job what whether, whether, whether it was covid just gave yeah. you a lot of time to be able to master it i don't know but yeah. uh it, even still uh, it was a p- very a very impressive job. Yeah, I was definitely trying to because I'm I'm uh, I slowly got obsessed with Elliot Smith and um, just the fact that you know especially Roman Candle. I mean, he just did it by himself. I was like, okay, well you know I'm gonna try doing that. Um, yeah, um, Dave was uh, definitely around for a lot of the the music stuff that was going on in college. Um, my buddy Phil came in on one of the songs on um, With Love. He actually frequency here every once in a while he's a good man nice leather jacket um a little arrogant but uh hmm. we won't hold that against him. <laughs> sorry i just had to say that some of us have that affliction here it's right? true yeah it's just the atmosphere <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so that's uh that's what was going on with uh, with that, but yeah, thanks for saying it, it sounded good i i appreciate that i'm glad oh, you yeah of course I, and so um what's kind of coming up for you now i mean are you are you kind of just playing these songs out doing the kind of uh radio bean nectar kind of thing um or are you kind of hunkered down and writing new songs or are you kind of like actually i'm kind of good for a little bit i'm just chilling i'd say um for like the past three years i've been just sort of coming up with like a song here and a song there and just throwing them out as singles you know i've been just sort of recording single after single and just sort of enjoying that um, 
you know, I actually, oh, I have an EP actually coming out pretty soon, so that's cool. I had a lot of spare time between, um, I, I spent like three years doing all sorts of like crazy stuff from like volunteer work to recovering from a mild traumatic brain injury, so a lot of time on my hands. So right now I'm sort of, you know, think I'm getting better, question mark. I think I'm, I'm cognizant now. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just sort of releasing some of the stuff now and hopefully, you know, going to be playing with my friends and having a good time, I think. Yeah. I mean, you kind of mentioned that brain injury, I mean, fairly significant portion of your life, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Um, did that did that change the way that you kind of approach songs? I mean, you already said that, that especially in terms of listening to songs, that certain certain songs you probably doesn't resonate quite as well with you anymore, or, yeah. or doesn't feel particularly nice to listen to. <laughs> yeah, has that changed the trajectory of what you're writing, or even more specifically, actually, what you're writing about? Yeah, I, I think my songs are, are dumber now. I think <laughs> I think uh, the lack of brain cells sort of sort of shows <laughs> in the transcription of these songs. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm I'm doing stuff a little bit quieter, um, a little bit simpler, but still also just trying to put them out, I suppose. And then just you know I'll have particular feelings about just how my head feels, and I'll be like, oh, I guess I can make that into a song. So. Actually, the next two songs are going to be about that, so that's pretty fun. Well, there we go, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it de definitely has some sort of influence on the songs that you're creating no, now. totally, yeah. And, you know, simpler doesn't necessarily mean worse. In fact, often times mm -hmm. it's a lot better. Yeah, um, yeah I noticed there's also uh, with your single artwork and your Instagram, actually, that there's a lot of natural imagery, uh, you know, trees, lakes, skies, um, is there anything in that? Is is that kind of a core part of the music you create? You create, uh, like the like the like simple na natural artwork. Yeah, is it is it that you do? You, are you singing about maybe specifically being in nature? Are you getting inspired by being in nature? Do you do you, do you write in nature? No, <laughs> I write in I write in uh in my parents' basement. That's where I write my songs. <laughs> you know, nothing nothing magical about that. I don't know. It's yeah, got some magic. Yeah, it's, it's some magic. Um, yeah, I mean, I really like nature. I think it's awesome. And, you know, go nature. Boo pollution, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd say that the artwork sort of stems from the fact that, like, I don't make good visual art. And um, I don't want to bug my visual artist friends about coming up with pictures and stuff. So I just... I scroll through my my Instagram of you know you know I spend a lot of time just wandering off alone and I'm like oh that looks kind of pretty I'll take a picture of that and now I just have this back catalog where I just like up oh, put it in you know so uh, yeah that's where they get the nature pics but no I, I definitely like being out in nature and although it doesn't influence my music I think it's uh, I think it's cool how when I'm out in nature and taking those pictures um, you know how like stuff gets stuck in your head like again and again and again and again mm -hmm. and again. Like sometimes, like I'll get songs stuck in my head from just walking around in nature, and I'm like, okay, well, thanks, I guess, you know, I guess just sort of being quieter and left with your thoughts sometimes helps with making music. So, go is, nature. Does that often is that often your own music that gets stuck in your head, or are you, are you talking about kind of earworms of like you know Oscar Mayer's commercial from 1996? Yeah, no, I'll I'll definitely say that. Um, it's not Oscar Mayer's commercial from 1996. Um, <laughs> I wish. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it'll be um, like anime theme songs. That sort of gets stuck in my head. That's really good, actually. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll get that stuck in my head. Uh, Mine's Playing Tricks on Me by Ghetto Boys. That, that gets stuck <laughs> in my head. That's just really fun. Uh, but, uh, nah, I, yeah, I'd say, like, I'll, I'll get these... I'll get, I won't get my, like, the whole song, but, like, I'll get this one chord progression or, like, little piece of melody, and I'll, I'll, it'll just, like, keep going in my head over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and I'll be like, okay, now I gotta make this a song, because it's just <laughs> getting annoying, so, I, that's, that's sort of the, the process, you know, I wouldn't say that it, it comes down to me in a, in a, as a beautiful angel, mm. but rather as, like, a, like a, a little woodpecker tapping on the side of your skull. Yeah, like a mosquito bite. How about this song? How about this song? Mm -hmm. um, I talk to a lot of musicians that say that their, their phone's kind of uh, memo folder is just chock full of just various ideas and, you know, they'll, they'll 
be shopping at City Market or something, or something come up and they'll, they'll record that memo or they'll write uh, something in their notes. Is that is that the same for you, or do you kind of like, all right, I'm 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 going to wait until I'm out of nature, I'm going to wait till I'm home, I'm going to wait until I'm in the basement, and then I'm going to kind of get this down? No, no, I just got to get it, otherwise it goes away. A lot of my melodies come, like, when I have a really crappy day, and I wake up at, like, 4 a.m. I'm like, oh, I can't go back to sleep now. <laughs> but your brain's awake and it's going, <laughs> and you're just like, okay, I guess that's a song. So <laughs> I'll record that. And I'll be miserable for one whole day, but then I'll wake up the next and I'll be like, oh, this is a nice voice memo. You know? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. Was... So yeah, no, I'll just, I'll just do it whenever. I have some interesting voice memos to say the least. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just listen back to it. I have this one where I'm just screaming total eclipse of the heart myself but that was like 2013 so i can't be too judgy um, no of course not but yeah. screaming i believe totally that there's a heart. musical bone in your body i mean I, I i will say i'm sorry scream. i'm bring, i'm going off track here, no oh good good i you i look like definitely, a guy who knows what he's talking about uh, annie, with music. annie and i definitely scream total eclipse of the heart on yeah. a regular basis to each other that's awesome uh we we both sing very loudly but i would say that we're, we're neither of us can sing a goddamn note although annie's definitely better than i am um, I can't play an instrument. Um, it's not that I, I tried when I was a lot younger, but maybe if I gave it another go now, but I feel like rhythm is just really difficult for me because I'll get like distracted and then I'll lose whatever rhythm I had. Oh, you just need you, like, it's just <laughs> it's like ADHD brain. I'll just, I'll, if someone's playing something, I can like be along to a so- be along to something, and then and then as soon as I start singing, I'll just start beating along to the the, the actual melody rather than the the actual beat, and it's it just goes off the rails real You're quickly. You're creative. Yeah. You got a hidden talent. <laughs> I, don't know. I think it's cool. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, to, not not to distract you from this this yeah. line of questioning, but yeah. uh, have you got another song? Yes, we do have another song. Wonderful. Um, it's a. Uh, um, during COVID, me and my um, extremely Italian American friend Joseph uh, watched all the Sopranos, and um, this song is about uh, Gloria Trillo, who is the love of my life. If you've seen the Sopranos, which is a sad thing to say, <laughs> if you've seen the Sopranos. <laughs> Anyways, this song is called Gloria Trillo. It's another spooky ghost song for Halloween.
Gloria Trello there by Jersey Dave. So, Dave, you're mentioning that you've got another EP on the way. So, tell me about that process. Is this going to be at home again? Are you going to are you going to be doing this uh, recorded kind of like you know with, as you said, the kind of mishmash of recording instruments? And... Yeah. So, actually, um, <laughs> having a brain injury can be a real plus. Mm -hmm. Um, because you get a lot of sympathy from your friends. <laughs> so my buddy AC, who's an awesome uh, producer um, and recorder and has a really great like home setup, he's got like, his dad's got like these anime like bookshelves and you open one of the bookshelves and you go downstairs and there's this awesome little recording studio. So like over the past couple months I've been down there and I recorded this four song uh, EP down there and um, it's it's almost done, so uh, it should be out this month actually, which is pretty cool. Oh, wonderful! Is there a particular theme or anything that kind of comes to mind when when thinking about this, or is it is it kind of just a collection of the four songs that you feel are most you at this moment? So, Tom, I'm a I'm a very angsty guy. Um, I have too much angst, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem, <laughs> and. Uh, this is the final straw. Like, this is the last thing I'm gonna do about being like, high school sucks, you know? So it's, I think it's called like prom songs mm. and it's gonna be like four, just like songs being like, I'm so sad. <laughs> so that's gonna be, that's, that's what it's gonna be about. It's gonna be like me trying to, to copy the cure and seeing what happens. And they did a great job, you know? Yeah. So I feel like if you, if you get, 10% of what they did, then you're probably onto a winner. Do you like The Cure? If you know what I, I like a little bit. I like a little. I like the. I like the main hits. Love I'm Cats is awful. It's just how dare you? Horrendous. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's the, a hot I can't take. Go, what's the lead singer called again? Um, cure. Oh, gonna kill, Mr. Robert cure. Smith. Robert Smith. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm a fan of him more than I am of The Cure because he hates the monarchy, and he will say so as often as physically possible. And I've got massive respect for that. So I, I'm more of a Robert Smith fan as a human being than I'm a The Cure fan as a band. That's awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, when you, if you're writing angsty songs, do you, do, do you need, because I, I imagine it's in a way a little bit traumatic, do, do you mm. need kind of like everything to be comfortable and right? Do you need to like put some uh, legumes on the stove and, and make yourself some a, a nice pot of beans and, and get your nice weighted blanket before you play it and whatnot? Or is this kind of like, you don't need to get into that comfy area because the way you're getting out this emotion is is going to be through music. Yeah, I think it's the latter. I think when when you're when you're an angsty little ball of energy, nothing can be right. So you're like, ah, yeah, don't worry about it. So uh, yeah, you just sort of sit down there and and get it out. I feel like that's that's better. Like I I I, I don't know. Like I can't have I can't have. Um, I can't have like a, a bowl of, of special case like cereal with the strawberries <laughs> unless I've unless I've gotten out whatever whatever demons. <laughs> I see. So the the comfort food comes uh, afterwards. You, yeah, first yeah. First of comfort, all, you need to get you know, the, the angst out afterwards. I see. Yeah. So that's actually kind of more of the reward for for getting out the said demons. Yeah, exactly. Do you like baths? Well, uh, yes, in general. I know they're a, they're a very like, <coughs> like. No, I'm a bit. I mean, they're, they're one. They're very cute. Um, <laughs> So, big fan of that. Uh, I feel like they get a bad rep, thanks to vampires. Cheers. Thanks, vampires, for, for laying this one on, on bats. Um, I, I was saying uh, bats. Oh, bats. bats. <laughs> 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 well... Yeah, I mean, go bats. I mean, switch, switch gears a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't I know. Where, are you talking about spooky things? I thought you so were just really we're going, good with, like, the theme of the like evening. you're, like, a Do decor like, guy. You're, you're uh, like not a big fan of bats. Um, yeah. I, had a, I had a pretty traumatic back injury actually last year uh -oh. so that's the last time I took a bath was to stop the spasms happening in, in my lower back which turned out to be a, a, a completely slipped and ruptured disc and it's actually this I think this time last year that I was going to emergency back surgery Ooh, um, so that's the last time I had a bath and maybe I've just got some like yeah, you know, I don't want to go and bath again because it just reminds me of that time that my back was spasming for three weeks straight and my legs went numb mm -hmm. so so no, no, not no I think it's the the short answer to that. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say that's like a that's like my big like self care thing. Is oh, is is part of a nice bath? Waste a lot of water and you get a crappy like water bill, but like 
don't know. Just do you feels... do the works? Do you do like petals and, uh, no, and no. smelly salts and candles no. and stuff? Bubbles every like... once in a while. Bubbles? If I'm feeling adventurous. Oh, that's but, nice uh, at least. Yeah, no. I just, uh, yeah. I don't know. What are you going to do? I, I, you know, I think, I think we're still friends. Even though, yeah, we can still work. Yeah, it's, 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 still, like it's still going places. You like bats. I like bats cool. for a start. Which I didn't is even ask about that. That's awesome. The cornerstone of any good friendship is, uh, is a mutual agreement on, on how great bats are. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting silly. <laughs> um, well, on that note, uh, before we, we we let you play off your last song, yeah. um, are you playing anywhere soon? And uh, when can we expect your EP? And lastly, if people want to listen to you in the comfort of their own homes in their own time, where would they find you? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's just Jersey Dave. There's only one Jersey Dave on Spotify. Luckily, that's crazy. Um, there's a Dave Jersey. Um, Screw that guy. Yeah, was, nah, well, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't met him yet, but I, there's certainly some tension, um, <laughs> no matter how hard I try to put it down. Um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, so you can find me on Jersey Dave on like Spotify, YouTube as David S, I think, but Spotify and, and Apple Music and all the rest, Jersey Dave. Um, and uh, I don't have any plans for shows because I, I don't know where to play shows and <laughs> stuff, but uh, I do open mics around town like... You know, I, I play at Slade every other Thursday. That's an awesome spot. And I play at the Radio Bean Open Mic every Wednesday. That's a other Wednesday. That's a great spot. And, um, yeah, EP, I no clue when it's coming out. My buddy's, he can take his time. He gave me a really good price. It was, so I was like, yeah. you can take the time <laughs> you, you need. You, but, yeah, um, yeah so, so that's that's the answer to three I questions. I think that was answer to all three, yeah. It's, it's rare that people kind of keep all three in their heads so yeah. thank you yeah well i don't have that much space in left so <laughs> i'm surprised myself uh what song have you got to play us out with okay well this is the fun one so despite the first three being uh as you said like 2010 indie boy mac demarco thing mm -hmm. going on um this is uh this is um an acoustic version of a of like a like a emo song that because i'm gonna have an emo band one day and uh <laughs> This is called My Bike, and uh, this is the fun one. The other ones were fun, but this one's really fun, I think. It is. Swear to God, that's the last time I would decide to try and hit my head. Myself starting to get out of my bed With medication I thought that I could try to be comfortably numb With lack of patience I found myself starting to get real and dumb And smart. Three in the morning occurred to me that's actually just who you are. And it's quite testing when I have to pick what's really right from wrong. I should be resting, but I'm still awake and still trying to play this song.
right, Jersey Dave there, playing us out with my bike. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thanks for making this easy, Tom. <laughs> I'm a very nervous guy. <laughs> I'm glad that I made this easy, especially after I turned up like five minutes late. So <laughs> it, was a, it was handsomely late. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, very much appreciate you two coming in, um, both Jersey Dave and uh, Massachusetts Dave. Uh, you, you, I feel like you need to jettison any other band member that's not from Jersey, but, or yeah. sorry, not called Dave at this point. Yeah, thank you, Dave Green, for doing this. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> You too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can catch us in two weeks. Thank you, Bob, for the thanks, Bob, for the confident uh, affirmation there. In, in two weeks <laughs> for Blackwater, they'll be coming in to talk to me. Uh, but for now, this has been WOMM LP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, one hundred five point nine The Radiator. It's been the Rocket Shop. I've been your host, Tom Proctor, and good night. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, <That was> <laughs> Sorry I was a little all over the place. Oh, no. Uh, fantastic. Very okay.